from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, welcome. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Bread Broadcast, where the Gospel is preached concerning, salvation by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. A sanctified Christian daily living through the power of the Holy Spirit. And an assured eternal glory for the saved, but eternal condemnation for the lost. Here to bring today's bread broadcast is, Josephine Zion Taylor. Our topic today is, starting out right. What a better topic to discuss on our first meeting of the new year. Starting out right. Our short reading is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 19, Verse 1, we stop at verse 10. Luke 19, verses 1 through to 10. And our case study is Zacchaeus. Let us pray. Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we appear before you, O Lord, on the legal ground of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the imparted and the imputed righteousness that he has given us. Father, we say there is none like thee. Thank you for everything, O oh Lord, which you have done, which you are doing, and which you still do. Thank you for bringing us into a new year. O oh God, we ask that you have your way by the Holy Spirit in this lesson. Bring this word to every heart to challenge, to convict, and to comfort. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen and amen. And we would like uh, to wish you a happy new year from Eternal Food Ministry. It's a prayer that your life will be better this year than last year, starting with your spiritual life, in Jesus' name. Our foundation text is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1, verse 3. Mark 1, 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. How can we start out right? It's a brand new year ahead of you. You don't know what's in this year. Only God does. How can you start the year right? How can I start out right? We should consider three things. And the first thing we need to consider is the wilderness of the heart. Zacchaeus is not known for anything good in his community because of the type of job he does and the way he goes about doing the job. Maybe you don't have a good name last year as well. Or there are some things in your life last year that you are hoping it will be different for good this year. Zacchaeus has amassed his wealth by overcharging people from tax collection. Zacchaeus' life depicts the natural corrupt nature of the human heart. The human heart is a wilderness, and none of us is immune. Filled with the dangerous animals and wild plants of our imperfect, sinful nature. We are not perfect. Although the human heart also has the potential to bring forth good and godly fruits, that God can use 
for his glory. And our good, if we let God do his work of redemption in our hearts. For anyone who wants to start out the new year in the right direction, you are to recognize that you have been damaged by sin and that you need God's forgiveness. We all came to this world as damaged goods. I know that's kind of harsh to say, especially when you look at a newborn baby, but Dr. McGee will say, that's, a, that's an eight pound uh, bundle of sin, you see. An unsaved person cannot do anything that would be pleasing to God, forget it. Because the wilderness of a sinner's heart, a heart that is yet to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and surrender to him, such a heart is at war against the tender mercy of God, which is being shown through the salvation in Christ Jesus. An unsaved person we start this year right by recognizing that his or her heart is not right with God. You've got to look at yourself in the mirror and call yourself by name if you are yet to be saved and tell yourself your heart is not right with God. And you need pardon of your sinful heart from God. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Acts 3, 19. Repent therefore and be converted. Now the repent that the Bible is talking about is for you to make a, an about face and say, you know what? The way I did it last year, I'm not going to do it the same way this year. I went my own way last year. I lived life as I saw fit last year. That's it. Enough of that madness, you see. Repent therefore and be converted. Now when you turn like that, and then you come to the Lord, then the Holy Spirit will begin the work of conversion in your heart. You don't convert yourself. The Holy Spirit does, if you let him. That your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. To not belong to him is to be lost to him. Let me say that again. If you are here to be saved, you are already lost. But you cannot be found by the grace of God if you come to the foot of the cross. To not belong to him is to be lost to him. Moving on. The second thing we need to consider if you want to start out right this year is the way of the mind. The mind has its own way. Zacchaeus looks for a way he can see the Lord Jesus. So he climbs a sycamore tree. Zacchaeus is not out to see the Lord just for curiosity's sake. It's not just because he's curious. No. His heart is yearning for a change. Zacchaeus knows his life cannot be pleasing to a holy God. The way he's going about scamming and swindling, pe swindling people of their money. He knows. You know in your heart. If your life is going to be pleasing to a holy God, your conscience will tell you. That is the, 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 the truth machine that God has given every human, whether you are saved or not. Your conscience will bear you witness. It will convict you or excuse you. You will know that your life is not right with God. No matter how thick a forest is, there's always a way or a route to move around in it. 
This tells us that within everyone who can comprehend the word of God that is being preached to them, unless that individual is born with some, um, uh, uh, what's the word now? Cognitive disability that prevents them from understanding. If you are not in that category, that means within everyone who can comprehend the word of God that is being preached to them, there's an ability to believe. If they want to believe, Say, so I don't know how to believe just because I am. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell. If you call the airport and you ask them, when is your flight to, say, Miami? And they say 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. You pick your bag. You have never seen the person you spoke with on the phone. And you show up, say, two hours before to check in at the airport. What do you call that? That's faith. You believed what somebody told you, that your flight will be 6.30 p.m. So you can believe, you see. God has put the conscience in the human heart as part of his witnesses to let an individual know that not believing is as a result of a refusal because you have closed your heart to the word of God, you harden your heart. Not because you are incapable of believing the word of God that you are hearing. However, if you see things from God's perspective, that is like preparing the way for the Lord through which the Holy Spirit can reach you. If you say, you know what, it's true. My heart is not right. My life is not right with God. That is like preparing the way for the Holy Spirit to reach you. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. The book of Revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, this is the Lord Jesus speaking to you now. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him or her and die with him or her and he or she with me. You see. So if you are convicted in your heart that your life is not right with God, that your heart is not right with God, hey, that's a good sign. Open up. Open up and let the Holy Spirit move in to show you the way. Amen. If you can achieve with your hand what you conceive with your mind, then you can believe with your heart. Hallelujah. Joseph and Zion, say that again. It's so true. If you can achieve with your mind, with your hand, what you conceive with your mind, then you can believe with your heart. Moving on. The third thing we need to consider is the walk on the path. A path is a well-trodden way. To walk on the path is to put the prepared way into action. A way that is prepared but not utilized, we soon be overgrown with weeds. But by constant use, plants have no chance of growing there. Zacchaeus did not just welcome the Lord Jesus into his house and host him and his disciples. He went further to show the change which had happened inside of his heart with a physical action. Zacchaeus said, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. This was one time thief that will tell you you are owing the tax department what you are not owing. 
and you collect it. Now he's saying, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. In other words, if I had scammed you of a thousand dollars, hey, just come to me, let me know, please. I'll give you back four thousand dollars. Now that's a change. That's a real change in somebody's heart, as shown by Zacchaeus. By this public de declaration, Zacchaeus is putting his feet on the path to walk in the way which had been prepared in his heart when he greatly desired to see the Lord. Anyone who recognizes their need of the Savior but fails to follow through with receiving him and walking after his footsteps is like saying the word of God as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. They hear God's words, but they do not do them. That's useless. As far as God is concerned, it's like you've never heard his word. The only problem is you are going to be in a greater condemnation because you are, you see. God has promised not to help such a person when their ruin and calamity comes and believe the word of God. If you scoff at the word of God, you hear the word of God, and you scoff at it, you harden yourself against the word of God, your ruin is sure coming. Another one saying it is the word of God. We see a brand new Zacchaeus after surrendering to the Lord Jesus as it begins to show a godly and good nature that was never in his nature before. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 28. The gospel, according to St. Luke, chapter 11, verse 28. But he, the Lord Jesus said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. The Lord Jesus was preaching on this occasion and the woman was so impressed and he said, blessed are the ears that hear you. And the Lord Jesus responded to uh, that woman and said, much more than that, blessed are those who hear the word and they do it, you see. Your speech and your deed are the mix that you need to be fit for his feast. Josephine Zion. Tell them again. It's so beautiful. You want God to set before you a table that is running over with spiritual blessings in this new year? Then you need this. Your speech, that is your confession, and your deed are the mix that you need to be fit for his feast. What have we done so far? How can we start out right? We should consider the wilderness of the heart to acknowledge that no goodness in us can measure up to God's holy, perfect standard. There's no goodness in you or myself to measure up to that. We just don't have it. Forget it. The way of the mind is to make up our mind to give it all to God. When you give it all to God, the Lord Jesus will make an exchange with you and give you his own perfect, holy righteousness. 
and that will make you look perfect before God. I look perfect before God, not because I'm perfect, but because I'm standing in the righteousness that the Lord Jesus has put upon me, that garment. So when I appear before God in the garment of righteousness that the Lord Jesus has given me, God looks at me and he sees the Lord Jesus, not Joseph and Zion. Hallelujah. The walk on the path is to put, put our faith into action by aligning our lives with the word of God. Your life has got to line up with the word of God. If it doesn't, you are lying to yourself. The Bible says you deceive yourself. According to our foundation text, the word of God is calling out in the wilderness of this world. Have you noticed that? That the world is a jungle. That we should prepare the way of the Lord and make it straight and make straight his path. A believer, now let me talk to a believer very short, very briefly. If you are a believer, you are living biblically, but you fail to follow this command from cover to cover as the Lord has commanded us. You know that you have found your life difficult. You know that because our Father will not let you slide back in that madness. You know that. The reason is your life is currently not in favor with God. If you're a child of God and there's an area of your life that is not being lived biblically, you are out of favor with God in that area and he's not going to favor you. That's why things have been difficult for you. Because the Bible says the way of the unfaithful is hard. That means you are being unfaithful to the husband of the church. So you need to repent as a believer. You know what to do. You need to repent and realign yourself so that this year can be better for you in every area than last year. Now the unbeliever who has been living life on his or her own terms has been living against God. You are an enemy of God. Pure and simple. That's what the Bible says. If you are not with me, you are against me. The Lord Jesus said. You can start the new year right by first believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop being God's enemy. You can't win the battle. You cannot. Stop fighting against God. Without this first step, God cannot help you. Forget it. However, if you confess that you are a sinner, ask God for forgiveness and surrender all at the foot of the cross of Christ Jesus. The Bible says you will find mercy. You have to come to God, the Father, through God the Son, the Lord Jesus. If you want to start your new year in the right direction, a link is coming up. I implore you, follow that link. Please, Father God, thank you for the new and living way, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, your word has gone out. I pray for as many people whose hearts have been convicted by this lesson and they want to turn it over to you. Father, open their heart. Let their spiritual ears become unstopped and let them hear your voice, Holy Spirit, as you guide and lead them on how to become your children, that their lives may turn out 
for good in this new year. And as for us, oh Father, we totally rely on you. Totally we cast ourselves at your mercy that you will help us to be more faithful in preaching the word of God this year than last year as a ministry and as believers. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only if the Lord Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good News Reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry.